Top of the morning traders, this is the wake up call. Let's get right into it and take a look at a few of the trades we have currently going and what we're looking for heading into tomorrow, today. Uh, first off is that we have the uh, CPI report due in North America today and also the employment, um, employment uh, ADP employment report, which are uh, basically the last big data points coming out of the US this week. So um, we could see a bit of volatility on those numbers, but more importantly, we're hoping to see a bit of follow through. Uh, and this uh, yesterday uh, at 10 o'clock was the first trades I've put out in a while. I did one small trade in the beginning of the week. But what we've, the problem we've had uh, is ever since the presidential election last Tuesday, we've had a lot, a lot, a lot of congestion. And uh, basically, I had to stop to just uh, had to wait to set parameters for uh, tops and bottoms, support and resistance for uh, a breakout before I could enter more trades because the congestion was just too much and it was just chopping up uh, any trading results. And uh, I'll try to post before sometime tonight or something over the weekend the uh, the trading the trading um, the back testing of the trading system and I'll show you all the trades that we hypothetically could have been entered into over the last few weeks. But why we didn't go into it give you a better idea what's going on here. Um, but it looks like we're back into the flow now, so uh, I should be back to uh, normal systems. All right, let's see. So we have the. Um, the Aussie USD, which we went short at 103.77, and now the pair is pushing lower, but it's coming in at its first major level of resistance here, which comes in around 103.33, and it also hits another level of resistance at 103. What we're looking for in this pair, though, is hopefully a push all the way down towards the 102. 102.50 area uh, to, to bail out, but we will watch the price action at these levels to see if we could, you know, we'll just take our profits uh, at this given point. Right now, resistance is um, is back up at the 55th at 103.86, and as long as the pair remains above below, we will favor continued move lower. Uh, the other pair that we're trading in right now, or I'm trading in, is the we want, I want to short the Great Britain USD at uh, 158.44, and on that pair, I was looking for a break of the congestion zone here at 150. 5850. Uh, looking for because the pair had just been consolidating between 15850 and the 55 here at 15903. And apparently we're looking for a move back down towards the uh, at least down to the 0.618 fib at 15880, 15808. Then hopefully looking for a break lower. A lot of congestion still in this pair there, so we'll have to watch this trade uh, quite quite closely. And as you can see, I mean, as I said, the support and resistance zones are stacked close together. Supports down at 15808, resistance to that 15903, and currently we're sitting about mid range. The euro USD, on the other hand, uh, is still sitting in this uh, quite congested area and doesn't seem to have much uh it seems it's trading counterintuitively. It's pushing higher while the rest of the majors are moving lower with risk. Um, until the pair breaks out of this 127 80, 127, 127 area, I'm not interested in trading this cross um, because it, just like the other majors, it's just scalping. It's it's just uh, it's just chopping everything up. So basically, that's all we need to know in that pair is that we need until it breaks out of the congestion zone, just stay stand clear. New Zealand USD is similar to the Aussie, sitting right at the bottom of its zone uh, between 81 it had a resistance zone. If you remember the range, you can see, let's get it more detailed here. The range it had currently going was between uh, 83.50 and uh, 81. The pair is right at the bottom of the range at 81. And as long as the cross remains below this 81 range, it uh, above this 81 range, it does favor a move higher in the short run. Um, a bounce off this level, we could see a move up to the 81.50, then to the 82 level. But if the pair does break below this 81 level, we could be off to the ratios lower down to the 80, uh, round to the 80. So basically, what we're watching in this pair is 81. And to see the price action here, a hold, we could bounce back up to 82, a break, and we can be down to the 80 level. Uh, the CAD uh, still sitting around parity, sure likes that level. Did go up and test the 50 fib though, that we have been talking about. Uh, for quite some time, uh, we'll have to see what the cross does. Uh, break below, uh, break below. The, we would have to break below the 99 and 80 area, basically, and we could be back, coming back down to the 0.382 fib at 99.43. Uh, move uh, break above parity, and we could be on our way up to the 101.50 level, and that would be right back into the extreme consolidation zones that we had in the beginning of the year. 
and then if we get up there, I'll show, show you guys good charts on that. Uh, the last one, USD JPY, up, 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 up. This pair has made quick work of its range, uh, bouncing from the bottom of the range all the way to the top. I mean, it went from 79.20 up to uh, 81, basically 20, 200 pips. And for that pair, you know that's a colossal move. Now, what we're going to watch here, what we're paying attention to, is uh, the top of this range here at 81 to see if, uh, if a little bit of uh, we can get a stop up here and maybe a little bit of consolidation at the top of the range um, which I actually would expect heading into uh, trading uh, and all this is due to the uh, Prime Minister um, doing some political wrangling and there may be new elections for for members of the House of Representatives in the near future and this will this uh, and it's rumored that a government that is more, more responsive to weakening the yen, more asset purchase programs and so forth could come into power. And if that is the case, we could see this pair move all the way back up towards the 84 and so forth and finally get out of this funk and uh, see a, a continued move higher. And it's two of the yen pairs we're going to take a look at are just because as the USD JPY is at the top of its range, so is the Aussie JPY and the CAD JPY. Now, if you wanted to, in all three of these pairs, you could go short the the uh, USD JPY right now, you just have to put your stops above this resistance, stop top of the resistance zone. The Oz JPY, you can do the same. You can put your stops above the top of the resistance zone and the CAD JPY. And on all these crosses, you'd be looking for a measured move, measured move lower. All right, everybody, this is the uh, weekend wrap. Keep an, I mean, excuse me, uh, wake up call. Keep a look out on the currency uh, Twitter feed. And uh, good luck trading. Time to make the pips. Jeez.